Today on Firebird Nation Sports Update, we'll recap the University of the District of Columbia men's and women's tennis seasons and look ahead to the NCAA tennis tournament. We'll also check in with the Firebirds women's track and field program as they prepare for the Penn Relays and the NCAA postseason as well. We'll visit with head cross country and track and field coach Alton McKenzie and his senior captain Kenesha Hollis. We'll also get an inside look at one of the key members of the Firebirds senior administrative staff when we speak with Associate Director of Athletics Mike Riley. All that and more coming up on the Firebird Nation Sports Update. Hello, this is Firebird Nation Sports Update, your inside look at the University of the District of Columbia Athletics. I'm your host, Matt Rienzo. Flap your wings and get ready to soar because the Firebird is rising in the nation's capital. In men's tennis action, the Firebirds enter postseason play having set a new school record for wins in a season at 16-4. The Firebird men earned the number two seed and advanced to the East Coast Conference Finals for the second straight year in a row, falling to Queens College 5-1 on April 19th. The men are currently ranked third in the East Region and they will face New York Institute of Technology in the first round of the NCAA tournament. Four players earned all ECC conference accolades, including first team selections Alexander Grabovac and Bruno Heisch, and second team selections Tomas Gajasek and Simon Anderson. On the women's tennis side, the Firebirds had a banner year, winning the East Coast Conference Championship in the fall, marking the first conference title ever for the Firebirds in any sport. They continued their success well into the spring season setting a new school record for wins in a season at 15-3. The women's tennis team also ended the regular season ranked third in the East Region. Four players earned East Coast Conference accolades, including first-teamers Christina Napivadova and Jessica Nunez, and second-teamers Maxime Doust and Maria Vitkina. Head tennis coach Dickie Mahaffey was named Women's Tennis ECC Coach of the Year. The women's tennis team will face Adelphi in the first round of the NCAAs. Look for both Firebirds tennis teams to make some noise in the upcoming NCAA tournament. Shifting to women's outdoor track, the Firebirds track and field program has been revitalized under new cross country and track and field coach Alton McKenzie. The women's outdoor track and field program is currently ranked 8th in the East Region. Senior Kenesha Hollis is ranked 19th and junior Callister Jones is ranked 27th in the nation in the 400 meters. The Firebird duo ranks number one and number two respectively in the East Region in the 400. The 4x400 four meter relay team of Kenesha Hollis, Callister Jones, and Kamoy Mace, and Kadian Jones ranks third in the region while the 4x100 meter relay team of Kadian Jones, Atia Amos, Jasmine Smith, and Shauna K. Creary ranks first in the region. The women's outdoor track and field team has two regular season events remaining before the NCAA championships begin in late May. The University of the District of Columbia Athletic Department held its third annual Student Athlete Recognition Luncheon on Wednesday, April 25th in the Sport Complex on campus. After comments from the senior staff members, the student athletes heard from Director of Athletics Patricia Thomas. Thomas spoke to the student athletes about being part of something special and unique as the university and the athletic department grows and develops. She also focused on paying tribute to those who came before us at the university and paving the way for future generations. The event provided the head coach of each athletic program with an opportunity to speak about the season and present awards to their team. In addition, each student athlete was presented with an athletic department participation certificate for their hard work and dedication. Student athletes were recognized for their outstanding academic performances as well throughout the year. Six student athletes earned perfect 4.0 GPAs in the fall term. 20% of the student athletes made the Dean's List, which reflects a 3.6 or higher GPA in the fall term, and a 3.0 or higher cumulative GPA. 50% of the student athletes were named to the Director's List, which reflects a 3.0 or higher GPA for the fall term. The Firebirds remain committed to excellence in the classroom. 
The highlight of the student athlete recognition luncheon came when Barry Conti, District of Columbia Teachers College, class of 1968, presented the Reslin Woodruff Henley Memorial Award. Reslin Henley was a superior athlete in basketball and football at Minor Teachers College in the 1930s, and he was an exceptional student as well. Reslin Henley was honored at the inaugural class of the University of the District of Columbia Athletics Hall of Fame in February. The Reslin Woodruff Henley Award is awarded to the student athlete who exhibits the highest character combined with academic and athletic excellence. The award was given to the student athletes from Minor Teachers College, District of Columbia Teachers College, and the University of the District of Columbia since 1953. This year's recipient of the Reslin Woodruff Henley Award was senior men's tennis captain Tomas Gajasek. Gajasek is a Prague Czech Republic native and he has amassed a singles record of 39 and 12 and a doubles record of 27 and 19. Tomas was the 2009-2010 East Coast Conference Men's Tennis Player of the Year. In 2010-2011, he finished ranked ninth in the NCAA East Region and seventh in doubles and was named ECC Men's Tennis Scholar Athlete of the Year and first team all-conference. This year, Tomas earned second team all-ECC honors. A senior captain, Tomas has been instrumental in transforming the tennis program from a 2-11 team in 2009, 2010 into a fierce contender in the ECC. Tomas is the quintessential student athlete and has set an example for all the future Firebirds to follow. Congratulations, Tomas. For a more detailed recap of the spring sports season and the student athlete recognition luncheon, please visit udcfirebirds.com. Also, don't forget to follow UDC Athletics on Twitter at UDC Firebird Fans, on Facebook at UDC Athletics, and on YouTube at UDC Athletics One. We're going to take a short break. When we come back, we'll visit with head cross country and track and field coach Alton McKenzie. We're now joined by University of the District of Columbia men's and women's cross country coach Alton McKenzie. Coach, thanks for joining us today. Thanks for having me. Coach, talk to us a little bit about uh, the outdoor women's track and field team and, and the season, how it's going as we head into the end of the schedule. Uh, we're lo looking good. Uh, we opened up at the um, at Williamsburg, William and Mary, um, back at the end of March. Opened up with one of our 400 runners uh, running a personal best at the first meet, and um, we've kind of built on that as the season has progressed. Uh, we were at Johnson C. Smith two weeks ago. We had two 400-meter runners run provisional qualifying times for the NCAA championship. So. Uh, we're getting to the point of the season where we're really looking good and people are getting ready to perform well. And how many events do you participate in in the outdoor schedule? Uh, quite a few. We're, we're kind of diverse across the board. The 100, 200, 400. Uh, we have a shot put and javelin thrower. She also competed in the heptathlon. Uh, we have long jumper, uh, two long jumpers, a high jumper, and um, of course a 4x1 four and 4x4. Four four. So. Not a big group, but we're across the board. We're, we're participating in every event. And approximately how many student athletes are on the women's outdoor track and field team? Uh, the full roster for outdoor is 16. Um, but you know, picking and choosing where we go and what meets we run in, um, that ne doesn't necessarily mean everyone is running every meet, but it's a total of 16 athletes. If you had to pick out a couple key performances thus far in the season, what would they be? Um, I have to start with the tremendous performances of um, Kenesha Hollis and Callister Jones in the um, Johnson C. Smith Invitational. Uh, they ran from the second heat, ended up running um, two of the fastest times in the country in Division II. K Kenesha was uh, 19th at the time when she ran that uh, pretty That's dominating. In the, 400 in the 400 meters, yeah, pretty dominating run. Callister was right behind her um, in that heat, running 56.14. So when you're you know, measuring against the rest of the country and you're in the top 20 or top 30, 
Um, that speaks for itself. Explain to those who aren't uh, track and field gurus, what is a 400 meter versus, versus what is a 4x400? Four what right. are those events all about? Um, the 400 meter is basically one lap around the track um, on a 400 meter track. 4x4 uh, four four obviously would be four times, each, one, each runner running 400 meters. So um, 400 is probably one of the toughest races because it's a sprint race. And pretty much just imagine trying to sprint for 400 meters. You kind of just hang on and, and um, see how long you can hold off. And the, those the two fame. events are really the strengths of the team, the 400 Correct. and then the 4x400? Four Correct. Um, we tend to be sprint-oriented but longer sprints. So um, our strengths are tied to the 400 meters, to be honest. But we also have people who are jumping well. So, uh, for, in, for example, Katie and Jones and Shauna K. Creary, I'm looking for them to utilize some of their speed on the runway. Now, you have the Penn Relays coming up this weekend, and for yes. those people that don't know, that's kind of like the Super Bowl of track and field. Tell us a little bit about that event and how exciting that is. Sure. Um, Penn Relays is like Christmas for me. Um, it's, you know, it's a wonderful Super time. Bowl, Christmas. Christmas for me, yeah. It's, it's a wonderful time of year because um, it, it combines high school athletes, professional athletes, and college athletes in one carnival. So um, that's very rare. You know, Pe Penn Relays is... One of the few meets, it's, you know, it's been around for over a century. So it's a three-day carnival, and it's something that every high school athlete in the, on the East Coast has experienced if they're lucky. And once you go to college and step up to the next level, it's something that you really get to measure yourself against the best in the country. So the University of the District of Columbia is Division Two. Is it Correct. atypical for a Division Two school to be uh, involved in such a national event as the, the Penn Relays, or is that fairly common? It's fairly common, but um, what differentiates us from other schools is that we actually go and we pretty much measure ourselves well against other division, against Division One schools. So, for example, last year we were 34th in the in the 4x4 overall out of 100 and maybe 15 teams. And um, we were the second fastest um, Division Two school um, last year at, at, at the Penn Relays in the 4x4 in the heat. So you get to run against everyone, and that's the beauty of track and field. You pay your entry fee, and you that's get great. to line up against everyone. It's a great experience. For oh, yes, athletes. most definitely. And uh, tell us about the NCAA postseason. What does that look like in Division Two, and then for the Firebirds? Okay, so um, what you do is you have qualifying marks that you need to meet, and based on uh, those qualifying marks, the top, maybe top 15 to 20 in each event would potentially be taken. So right now, you know, Kenesha is right on the cusp and uh, Callister is close as well. So both in the 400. Both in the 400. The 4x4, four four, we're hoping to, to improve in. We were 17th last year and this year we haven't run it well yet, but um, the season isn't over. So we're looking forward to the next coming weeks to see where we can, how close we can get to qualifying. Great. Now switching gears a little bit. Uh, let's talk about recruiting Division Two at the University of the District of Columbia. Where do you find your student athletes that end up here, and how does that process work for you? Well, it's um, pretty competitive because Division Two actually for track and field, you you can pretty much recruit against anyone in the country as far as where you get your athletes. So, um, we're not just in the country, in the world. Uh, some of the top Division Two athletes are actually international students, so from Jamaica, Germany, Czech Republic, y you name it. Um, so you kind of you have to go and fight for the athletes just as you would against the Vision One um, programs. Um, I tend to have a connection through New York and trying to get local kids from D.C. as well. And I have a strong connection with Jamaica. So um, I'm not particularly you know, choosing where I would recruit. I just want kids who want to come to the University of the District of Columbia. That's the, the most important criteria for me is and to get kids who want to be here. over a year. How has the program transformed in that period of time? Well, in my opinion, I, I think I've created an environment where we're, we're trying to show that we're trying to be competitive and um, that we want to be an elite Division II program. And obviously that takes some time. But the goal is to um, get kids who understand that we're here to compete and we're not just you know, trying to make numbers up. We're actually trying to um, you know, measure ourselves well against anyone we run against particularly against Division II schools. Okay, now last question. We're going to be joined by Kenesha Hollis, your, your senior captain, in a couple of minutes. What has a student athlete like her meant to the program? Um, well, you know, how I measure her, or how I would uh, you know, tell you about Kenesha, is she, her season started um, in August. And when I say that, she's a top cross-country runner on the team. Uh, she's a, you know, one of the few All-Americans that we have on the team. So she covers everything. She covers all bases. She's a, in the, you know, is a utility worker. She covers everything from cross country. She runs the 800 as well. She could jump if I allowed her to jump. Um, 
She's right now probably the best athlete that I've coached in my, my short career. So um, it's a blessing to have her on the team, and I'm going to miss her when she's gone. Great. Well, we'll look forward to chatting with her in a couple minutes. Coach, uh, best of luck to you in the Penn Relays and in the NCAA tournament as well. Hopefully uh, we'll get a few Firebirds in there. And thanks very much for joining us today. All right. Thanks, man. Thanks for having me. Coming up next, we'll visit with senior captain Kanisha Hollis. We're now joined by senior student athlete Kanisha Hollis from the women's indoor and outdoor track and field and women's cross country team. Kanisha, thanks for joining us today. Thanks for inviting me. Uh, Kanisha, tell us a little bit about yourself. Well, I'm from Santa Vera, Maryland, and I, go to no I went to North Carolina High School, which is in Ridgely, Maryland, home of the Bulldogs, <laughs> and that's pretty much it. What's your major in school? Criminal justice. And uh, do you have any idea what you'd want to do when you graduate? Not yet. Still working on, <laughs> Still working on it, yeah. That's good. Uh, now, how did you end up at the University of the District of Columbia? Well, my senior year indoor track, I was running, and um, the previous coach, uh, Mark Harrison, see me running, and that's how I got here. So he recruited you, and then uh, Coach McKenzie came along and is now the head coach. What's it like running for Coach McKenzie? It's fun. It's really fun because he just has, like, like really positive energy that just keeps you focused and makes you want to do good and make them proud. That's great. Now, Coach tells us that you're a great captain and an excellent student athlete. Um, how hard is it to balance uh, being a student and, and being a track and field athlete as well? Sometimes it's really difficult, and then sometimes it's easy. I think with my major, it's a pretty um, steady balance. Sometimes I have my lazy moments or I just want to watch TV, but it's pretty even. And now tell us a little bit about your track and field career. What are your events uh, that you excel in and the ones that you enjoy? Um, the ones I excel in are the 400, the open 400, and the 4x4, four four, either second leg or anchor leg. And the 800, I like it sometimes. It depends. And cross country, we don't get along. But I do my <laughs> best. <laughs> that's great. Well, that's a good team captain attitude to have. Uh, even though it's maybe not your favorite to just do your best in it. How did you get into running in the first place? Uh, I always wanted to run when I was younger. And just my sophomore year of high school, my friend was like, come out for a track. And I was like, I don't know. And then I went out there, and I just loved it. I didn't take it serious at first. But then my senior year, I decided I can win. So I started winning, and I loved it. That's great. Now, I see that you're ranked 19th in the country in uh, the 400 meters. and. I believe you're also ranked in the 4x400 as well. Congratulations on Thank that. Thank you. That's exciting. Thank you. Hopefully uh, you'll be moving up in the rankings as the year progresses. Yes. Uh, you think there's a chance of that? Of course. And, and then you have the Penn Relays coming up this weekend. Are you excited for that? Very. Have you participated in that before? I have. Yes, I have. Um, the first time was my freshman year. Never seen a track before. And when I got in there, I was a mess. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know what to do. Yes. But it was a lot of fun. That's great. That's a big event and, and uh, yes. obviously a storied uh, event in track and field. Um, now, what's the postseason look like for you and, and some of your teammates? Are you going to be able to be, participate in the NCAAs? And what does that look like for you? Do you know yet? Um, I don't know yet, but hopefully Callister and I and the 4x4, four four, we can get it together and we can go out there and show everyone in Colorado what we can do. Last question is, what's it like being a student athlete at the University of the District of Columbia? Do you like going to school here, and, and what's that whole experience like? I like 
going to school here because it's um, a small population and so I don't have to worry about too many people in the classrooms. I can get one-on-one -on -one with my professors and uh, actually get the help that I need if I have any questions. And then as far as being an athlete, it's pretty much everyone knows who you are around campus. And it's exciting for someone to just come up to you and say, hey, you're on the track team. I see you on the poster. And it's exciting. That's I like nice. It. Well, Kanisha, thanks very much for joining us today. Uh, best of luck to you in the Penn Relays this weekend. And Thank in you. the NCAA tournament as well. And uh, wish you all the best. Thank you. Coming up next, we'll go back into the studio and we'll visit with Associate Athletic Director Michael Riley. We're back in the studio now with Associate Director of Athletics for Internal Operations, Mike Riley. Mike, thanks for joining us today. No problem, man. Thanks. Hey. Now, you're a native Washingtonian. Tell us a little bit about that. I uh, grew up in Washington, D.C. Great place to grow up in, Matt. Um, actually went to elementary, junior high, and uh, high school and college all in Northwest Washington. And uh, people that are from Washington, D.C. know that it's the greatest city in all the cities because uh, it has great sports teams along with the most powerful person in the whole United States, um, right down the street, actually. Uh, and Cardoza High School as well, right? Cardoza High School. Um, memories there that go back I can't mention and talk about right now but uh, they were great memories. Now you're the Associate Director for Internal Operations at the University of the District of Columbia. Correct. What does that uh, title entail? What do what your roles include? Well <clears throat> actually it encompasses everything that goes on with the sports teams that we have at UDC. Um, basically you take care of the uh, operational and functional activities of all the teams whether we have games or uh, practices, make sure that the building is in order, uh, make sure the teams that come into play have a locker room, uh, time to practice, uh, making sure we have equipment, uh, making sure the fans when they come to the game have a good experience when they come. Um, so it really takes care of everything Sounds with like the day-to-day -day operation of the building itself. Now in your time uh, at the University of the District of Columbia, uh, how has the department developed and changed in, in your time? Well, um, I've been here three years, and Patricia Thomas, who asked me to come here, uh, I've been knowing Patricia for 35 plus years. Um, and I know she knows what she's doing. She's smart, she's bright, uh, she's creative. Uh, she makes you want to do the things that you do in order to make things right. And if not, you'll hear about it 2 o'clock in the morning or whenever she emails you, she stays up, but um, no, she does it the right way and um, she has a, she's put together a great staff of people that are working and we're trying to make things happen and things have happened in a short period of time. Um, we definitely have had some good teams. She's hired a couple of coaches that are great people uh, to work with and I think if you're in a place and you have people doing what they need to do but they're fun to work with, it makes you really want to come to work every day and that's where I am right now. And you mentioned the staff, certainly the senior staff, the administration and, and the support staff, but also the coaches, great coaches at the university. Great coaching staff, they go out and recruit great people um, that are, happen to be student athletes and they come here to the school. And so when you get people like that, you wake up in the morning, you got to go to work, you know, it's not like, oh, I got to go to work. It's like, okay, yeah, what do I have on tap? It's a lot of work. It's a lot of work. It's a lot of things that we're trying to put in place, things changes. Um, that we put out and put in place, but every day when you come, there's something new happening, always. Now, Mike, you have a really interesting background that I think a lot of the viewers would like to know about. Um, 
you grew up in the area, as we talked about. You played basketball at Georgetown University, right. and then you coached at Georgetown University men's basketball for over cool. 20 years, cool. um, from the mid 80s, early 80s, through the mid 2000s. Right. And uh, you were part of teams that were, went to the Final Four, won a national championship, multiple Big East titles. Um, wow. You were, you were at Georgetown during the real heyday right. of basketball. What was that like? Uh, tremendous times. Uh, working for Coach Thompson, obviously, um, being around the program, some of the great athletes that we had during the time that came through. Um, you know, I, I can't put into words exactly uh, how I was overwhelmed with the things we had to do and how much enjoyment and fun that I had. Uh, I never had any idea coming out of school that I was going to come back and coach where I went to school. Um, and being in the Big East, going to those national championship games that we did, um, and being a part of that program, it always be a place in my heart for that. Um, I mean, you coached some great ones, Patrick Ewing, Alonzo Mourning, Dikembe, Matumbo, Allen yeah. Iverson. Yeah, yeah, all those guys are great guys, um, and they were good people. And I think if you work around athletes that are good people, it's easier to do. And, you know, we still keep in contact. We have reunions at Georgetown. Uh, periodically. Uh, my class, the guys that I went to school, we try to get together every couple of years uh, and go out and just be together. We keep in contact with one another. But that's a, that's a brotherhood that you can't ever erase from your history. You always have that. That's great. And now how has the transition been now being an administrator at the University of the District of Columbia, going from being a coach to being an administrator? Similarities? And there are some similarities and there are some differences. Um, you know, being a coach, you worried about game day and practice and after the game you went home. But being an administrator, you worry about all the things before the game, um, during the game, um, and after the game, not necessarily the things that happen on the, bat on the basketball court or on the soccer field or on the tennis uh, court itself. You just worry about the things that preparing for those things as administrator. But I wanted to get in this part of it. I wanted to see what it was like. Um, it's a lot of work, a lot, lot more than I thought it was. Not necessarily more than coaching, though. Well, <laughs> coaching can be a different kind of work. Different type of work. Different type of work. You're absolutely right. Now let's switch back. To, uh, the University of the District of Columbia men's basketball team won the national championship in 1982. Right. And they were just honored at the inaugural Hall of Fame cool. event that we had in February. Um, I've been told that you came to some of the basketball games at the University of the District of Columbia back in those days in 82 and the 80s when you were coaching. Right. Tell me a little bit about that atmosphere in the sports complex. Well, being in the city, when I was a kid, I used to go up to uh, Howard University to go to their games. And basketball is basketball. I gave Lefty Drizel for Maryland boarded college basketball because this was a town that was a high school town at one time. Um, and then Howard because it was up the street from where we are. That's when I, my first taste of college basketball. But then when UDC, Will Jones came over here, he put together a team that had local flavor. Kids were from DC, came over here. You come over here and the place was packed. The band was playing, uh, people were up in the stands, yelled the cheerleaders. I mean, it was just a great place. And I think that's where we'd like to get it back to, um, to where we've got some local flavor, kids here and have good teams. We've gotten the good team part. We just gotta bring back things like the band and make sure the kid, the people in the city know that there's a good product that we and have. Certainly the city. coaches and administration working on that as we speak. Um, what are the chances that the University of the District of Columbia and the basketball programs can return to that level? Obviously the, both the men's and women's basketball teams made it to the NCAA tournament this, this year, so they're Correct. doing very well. Right. What about the atmosphere? Can, can the department and the programs get back to that level, you think? I, I think you can, Matt. I think that you know, getting the word out to people, getting, letting them know what we have here. Um, I think uh, Coach Rulin and Coach Butler do an excellent job going out and recruiting kids and bringing kids over. I've just met a couple of kids from both teams, actually, uh, that are very, very good players that they're bringing. But I think the, the key to it is getting out and letting the, the people in the neighborhood. I think shows like this, where people can go on the website and look at uh, being able to, uh, to watch those games and, and see those games, come over and see those games, I think it would be great for the people because people that like basketball like basketball, and this would be a great atmosphere to come over and watch basketball. Well, that's great, uh, Mike. It's been a pleasure having you on the show. Thanks sure, very man. much for joining us on the Firebird Nation Sports Update. Appreciate you having me. Hopefully Matt. we can have you on again. Okay. Thanks Thank very, very much. much. Okay. Thanks for watching the Firebird Nation Sports Update. I'm your host, Matt Rienzo.
The Firebird is rising in the nation's capital, and we're glad you're along for the ride. Oh.